Hello tubers, part five of the uh, the test of the Noco. I'm, I promise I'll get onto the Noco teardown fairly soon, like tomorrow probably. And we'll do some more parametric testing of this. We got delayed by this uh, Halfords battery that we've been cycling and charging and reconditioning and seeing what does what. So we have the Jaguar battery, which I mentioned last time it's on the floor, the big one that's just come out in the Jag, and uh, we'll get onto that as well. But at the moment, what we did last, at the la end of the last video, we recharged the Halfords battery completely using the reconned mode, okay? So now, without further ado or wasting any more time, I'll get straight onto the computer and have a look at the results about what it did and how it performed in terms of whether it increased the capacity of this battery or not. I have had some chats with the Yesu technical support team, the technical expert, about um, over-voltaging uh, sealed regulated lead acid batteries aka maintenance free batteries which are commonly sold these days starting batteries for automotive use and uh, have some information on that and that's going to lead on some, some more testing which we can do in experimentation actually with this battery but at the moment i'm going to stick to this and i'll, I'll probably cover that so anyway let's get on to the results and you can have a look and see how it did Okay, here's the results of the CTEC MXS 5.0 reconditioning charge voltages. So this is the charge of that Halfords battery after the normal charge for the CTEC. This is the second charge we've done with the CTEC, and we'll discuss the actual discharge performance in a moment, but this is the actual program it went through to charge with the reconned mode engaged, okay? So this was a over 24-hour charge, and it stopped charging the current ebbed away to zero and then we did a discharge so we'll discuss the discharge of the CTEC MXS 5.0 this is a CTEC charge reconditioning charge cycle so we've got three lines on this graph we've got the battery voltage here um, we've got the uh, current in the charger so that's the charging current there and then this green line is the amp hours that went into the battery okay so we can see with all this extra activity we boosted the input charge to the battery, um, 25 or 20, you can see there, I don't know if you can see that uh, point of that value there, but it says 24.62 amp hours. And I've averaged over 10 readings per point, so that's reading number 1072, which is uh, 10,000 readings. Okay, so anyway, 24.62 went back in, and then if we look down, this is up here on the right hand side at that point, okay, there, All right, so. What did we do? It, we plugged it in, and then after a while, we switched on. This is uh, quiescent. You can see the voltage, the quiescent voltage of the battery was 12.49. After switch on, another bit of charging. Then it ramped the current up to this point here. There's a little uh, aberration here. It switched off and then switched back on, which is strange. I got a feeling that's where I actually realized I wasn't on recon mode, and I hit the button to make it go back into a uh, normal car battery with recon, so the two LEDs, the car symbol and the reconned LEDs were both illuminated throughout the whole of this charge. So you can see it went back up to its maximum charge, which is 4.58 amps. You can see that down there at this point, it's, it holds steady at 4.58. And once more, just to recap, this battery had been charged, discharged down to 10.6 volts under load with a 10 amp load, all right? So it wasn't fully discharged. So here we have 4.58, okay? So 4.58 amps, and it stays pretty constant for quite some time until it gets to this point here when we've, where it's put in 3.92 amp hours have gone into the battery. And you can see the voltage generally slowly rising, 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 all right? And it does, it sort of follows the normal charge thing where the charge current just decreases. You can see here, 3.17 it does some jiggery poker read down here and then starts to get fairly variable down here around about the uh, 1.9 amp stage and at the same time you can see here there's a probably the analysis stage where it turned the current down and the battery voltage the, the current down to zero and observed here you can see it switched off the current the charging current is off and the battery voltage has relaxed down to 13.5 volts all right it then re-engages and starts to climb it then re-engages the charge current holds it steady at 1.94 amps for that long you can see just here this 1.94 amps is making the battery voltage rise up 
to 14.56. If I line those two up, it just crosses 14.8 volts there, 14.88 volts down here. And you can see it starts to reduce the charging current. So the current charging current reduces on this curve whilst the battery voltage is pushed up and up and up. And this is the reconditioning section where you overvolt the battery, hopefully make it gas a little bit, and then remove some of the sulfide that's on the plates. And you can see that it peaked out here at 15.47 volts, right? So the battery voltage went way above what it's supposed to be, and that's the reconditioning section there. It then cut off the reconditioning current, reduced it back down to zero, presumably observed the battery voltage, and then just followed on with this tiny tail off of current here, so which peaked at uh, 290 milliamps and went all the way down to here, 220 milliamps, and then switched off, and then it was complete, and it was switched on, left on for 24 hours. So that's the CTEC MXX 5.0 reconditioning charge cycle of a car, a normally lead acid car battery. So that's what we observed. And now if we go on to the results of what we actually saw, so you can see the result of the first standard CTEC MXS 5.0 charge discharge was, it gave, it yielded 20.57, which was a minus 5.1% drop, which we discussed at the end of the last video. So it didn't do that well on the state straight charge. It didn't put as much charge back into the battery as the straight charge with the Noco Genius 5. But then we did the uh, reconditioning charge. And if we just scoot down to the reconditioning charge discharge results here on the CTEC MXS 5.0. So recon charge, full 24 hours, then the 10.6 volt, 10 amp discharge. And we got 21.89 amp hours from the battery. So we had basically more charge than the CTEC put in with the standard charge. We got uh, quite a bit more, 1.32 more amp hours and a 6.4% increase on its previous charge. And for some reason, it didn't push the voltage above 13.8 uh, very, for very long on that charge. It didn't seem to be a complete charge, but it was on 24 hours and the LEDs, the relevant LEDs lit up, all right? So anyway, so we've got 20.57, which was less than we were getting with the Noco Genius 5. So then we did the reconditioning charge, and we got a 21.89 amp hours from it. Full recondition, discharge as before, 21.89, which is a 1.3.2 amp hour improvement over its, the CTEX last charge, and a 6.4% improvement over the CTEX last charge. But if you compare this, these two figures down here, these ones, are just compared to the last cycle with the Noco Genius 5. So we've got a 0.22 amp hour increase in uh, capacity, I don't know if that's uh, significant, and a 1% increase in the uh, capacity as well, which is the same basically, it's just calculated from those two. And that is compared to the uh, these readings up here, which was the last full charge discharge we did with the the Genius 5. So no major changes on the CTEC reconditioning charge. Possibly a 6.4% increase over its own performance. And say that might have dropped 1%, so probably a, maybe a 7.4% increase over its performance. but only a 1% increase over the last Noco Genius 5 charge discharge cycle up here. So it looks like the uh, reconditioning uh, cycle from charge from the CTEC MXS 5.0 hasn't really done very much. I will do one more charge with the Noco Genius 5 and see whether the this has had an effect, the recon conditioning cycle from the CTEC has had any effect on what the NOCO is doing, but nothing dramatic anywhere in these reconditioning, recharge type cycles. So nothing much to report, I'm afraid. So let's have a quick look at the last charge cycle and discharge cycle with the Genius 5 and see how that did after the CTEC. So after the last charge discharge cycle with the CTEC, we then connected the Genius 5 again. So this is the Genius 5, Noco Genius 5 charge cycle. And I thought you might be interested. This was in the same state discharge batteries 
and you, here you can see the three curves. You've got voltage of the battery, the VBAT, you have the current in, in red, and then this green line going up here is the increase in the amp hours fed into the battery. Remember, this is a charging cycle, okay? So if anybody that's interested, you can see what the NOCO actually did. And it started off from zero down here, and then it went up to 4.88 amps, which is a bit more current than the, uh, the CTEC. 4.88 amps, and you can see the voltage here started off at 12.17, it's probably a bit lower than that, but it's been averaged over the first five readings, so as soon as the current comes on it rises. And then you can see the current is sweeping up here to this point, we've got a constant charge of 4.88 amps up to this point there, and it, at 14.2 volts, 14.02 volts, it switches down to this current level, which is 3.96 amps, and it carries on to 3.96 until the voltage reach, reaches 14.12. It then dropped to 1.99 amps until the voltage swept up to that point, 14.19. Then it switched down to 0.98 amps to this point when the voltage reached 14.27. And then it dropped the current to this constant current down here of 180 milliamps, all the way along here, look to there, 180 milliamps. And you can see the voltage, terminal voltage of the battery is sweeping up. And as the charge goes in, you can see the sweeping up, sweeping up, sweeping up. Current increases and increases up to this point, which is 14.49 volts, and then cuts off, and charges then complete at that point. So that's so that's the Noco Genius 5 charge cycle. So that's what it did. That, that looks pretty good to me, actually. It looks in control. It's done, done its thing. It's done a nice constant float charge, and then cuts off at a pretty accurate voltage of 14.4, 14.51, which is... I think is correct. I don't know what you think. Leave your comments down below. So that is it. And now the next stage is going to be, I'll do some tests on the JAG battery as a separate, uh, the big JAG battery you saw as a separate video. We'll now get on to the detailed testing of the uh, Genius 5 and its various modes. Okay. So in conclusion, on this battery, sample size one, which was a serviceable battery but had low capacity and was in daily use until I put it on the bench. The reconditioning modes, the various reconditioning cycles we've been through with the NOCO and the CTEC don't seem to have made any appreciable difference to this battery. So there's no magic bullet for this one, I would say. Uh, we'll do a bit more testing and I've um, got a few more ideas up my sleeve. But All right, so there's one more thing to look at. It's just the results of the discharge of the battery after it was subject to the Genius 5 charge cycle that you can see on the screen at the moment. So let's go on to that now. Okay, the final set of results for this. What have we got? Uh, let me see. So this number 15, charge cycle 15, Noco Genius 5, charge, discharge, a complete charge. You've seen the charge cycle already. This is the discharge results with that graph we just looked at. And you can see we've got 21.75 amp hours output, which is pretty much the same as all the other Noco's up here. Yeah, and I'm pausing because I'm thinking someone said that I was damaging the battery, but if you look at the um, Uesu website, which is the company that manufactures this battery for Halfords, they say as long as the battery voltage doesn't go below 11.8 when it's open circuit, then it won't discharge and you can get almost the full capacity back. So we weren't into the damaging uh, area of the discharge anyway. So anyway, so to, to go back to that, we've got 21.75, which is pretty typical of what we've been seeing before. And it was just 0.14% less than the reconditioning charge of the CTEC, the one above, okay? So they're all, it could be the temperature has changed it slightly or slightly different parameters, but nothing earth shattering, nothing significant, nothing regenerated, nothing recovered, nothing reconditioned and nothing much repaired but leave your comments and see what you think. Now, we have got one thing here which I want to show you now. So that's that, done. Well, that just about concludes the testing of the Halford's battery and these two chargers, the CTEC and the NOCO, to see whether the regen modes work. They haven't worked really on this battery. 
but we'll try again on the Jaguar batteries and we've got a few other things which I can think of that also people have suggested we can try. Now what I have got is this Vedan 12 volt battery analyzer. It claims to be able to go to, here we are, it's the specification. Test everything up to 1100 cold cranking amps in a thing this size. I think this is what the battery manufacturers call a battery conductance meter. And they very strongly refute the action of these in terms of someone coming along saying my battery is not making the CCA. People like Yesu say these don't work. And they actually state it in their distributor manual about batteries that don't believe what these say because they're very thin wires. And it's supposed to be able to go down to uh, these specifications here, up to 1100 cold cranking amps. I use normally this thing, which is a carbon pile battery tester, which I think you've seen, if you want to see what's inside this, there's a video on this channel that shows you the guts of this. We never actually fired it up and put it into use, but we're ready to have a go with it, I think. And, you know, it's got a big carbon pile in there and it goes up to 500 amps cold cranking test. So we can go up to 500. So we can do the Halfords battery with that. I'm not sure we can do the... Uh, jag battery but you never know this other wee chinese device which i bought because someone suggested i should use that we can compare the results from one with the other the old traditional type and the new super chinese type which is uh, discredited by the battery manufacturers themselves okay i'm just going to zoom in on that so you can have a look okay so that's that. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll get onto this after I've done the knock-out and we'll have a good old go with some cold cranking tests with the batteries. And I've also ordered another battery charger which was suggested by another YouTube viewer. It's a basic 4 amp battery charger, two-stage battery charger, and it costs £17 from eBay. I'll bring that out after the knock-out 5. So yeah, if you can if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe down there and leave me a like. I appreciate that and I'll see you next time. I look forward to receiving your comments.